Hello and welcome. My name is Serdar and in this educational video, I'll be your guide to walk you through the evolution of AI paradigms, all the way from classical AI to modern and generative AI. The goal of this video is to describe how these techniques differ from each other, so that the next time you're interacting with an intelligent agent in the real world, you can quickly evaluate it and more importantly, manage your expectation about its strengths and weaknesses. Let me start by acknowledging that AI is literally everywhere right now. We are interacting with AI systems in our daily lives without even thinking about it. Most applications are fun and engaging like social media filters, or they provide us convenience like how we plan our commute and how we shop more efficiently using product reviews to help us make a choice. Let me also appreciate the AI applications that have the potential to revolutionize the human experience and make the world a better place like better prediction of natural disasters to increase safety and preserve wildlife, guiding doctors and surgeons in emergency situations, and even breaking down communication barriers among people with non-standard speech. So, undoubtedly we are witnessing a rising trend here. But what really is happening? Why do we have such mainstream attention to AI? The answer to this question is not obvious, unless we look at what's happening and the evolution behind AI paradigms from a broader perspective. Let me take the last 75 years of artificial intelligence and simplify it for you in three steps. Classical AI, modern AI, and generative AI. Let's use a simple example, such as deciding whether a product review is positive or, not, or negative. How would these different paradigms solve the classification of product reviews? In classical AI, we would write down specific rules to decide the outcome, like if-then rules. In our example, we can say, if the review includes the word happy, then the label is positive. One example of the shining moment of this type of AI is IBM's Deep Blue playing chess against World Grandmaster Kasparov. However, this type of AI can run into issues because there's a limit on how many rules we can specify and what we can express as a rule. Also, notice that it's not general purpose and we cannot use it in another task. Then people said, but wait, why do we have to write the rules? Cannot we show the computer the input data paired with the output labels and let the machine learn these rules on its own? And that's exactly what led to the era of machine learning and deep learning. One example of the shining moment of this type of AI is another game playing agent, Google's DeepMind's AlphaGo, playing Go against world grandmaster Lee Sodong. What's the limitation of this type of AI? Well, this type of supervised approach can run into issues because it depends on truth labels that we need to provide. What's happening today is even more exciting. People said, why do we even need the labels? Cannot we just feed the data to the machines and let the machine learn how this data is created in the first place? Now, this is an extremely powerful idea because if the machines learn this process once, then it can generate data on its own continuously and we can reuse these pre-trained models all the time without any additional effort. That's the key idea behind generative AI, which led to an inflection point where machines on their own, without us providing the rules like classical AI or providing labels in modern AI, only with self-supervision, learn how to generate text, images, video, sound, audio, and etc. One example of the shining moment of this type of AI is Microsoft's famous ChatGPT. What's the limitation? Well, there's at least two main concerns with this type of generative AI. Number one, the data that goes into training these large models remain opaque. And number two, the data that comes out remains unknown in terms of factuality. As we go from left to right, I would like you to notice a few things. First of all, not everything will immediately become generative AI all of a sudden. This is an evolution and we will see applications of each type to coexist together where they are best applicable. As we go from left to right, we are gaining efficiency, better performance, and we move from specific to more general purpose tools. At the same time, we lose some close control. The next thing I'd like you to notice is how the time needed for technological leaps have shortened drastically. That means we depend on the broader community for education and keeping up pace with these advancements. 
The great news is, notice how generative AI lowers the entry barrier for everyone as a general purpose tool that we can all interact with. So to conclude, this is exactly why we are seeing a lot of attention and investment combined with practical and visible applications everywhere. We expect this trend to continue, and I hope with this educational video, next time you see an application or an opportunity, you can quickly evaluate what type of technology you need and differentiate among them. Thank you.